This is an interview with Malika Bilal. She is a journalist and editor for uh, Al Jazeera English. Thank you and thank you for your time for this interview. Thanks for having me. Egyptians have a chance to vote first time in a post Hosni Mubarak era. How much are these parliamentary elections important for Egypt? Um, I think these elections are really important for Egypt just because, number one, this is um, this is the second uh, round of elections in the, the Arab Spring, um, so-called Arab Spring. So Tunisia had theirs first, and now it's Egypt's turn, and Egypt is such an important um, country in the region, um, not only in the Middle East, but just for the entire greater Arab world. Um, and so... It's important for that reason, but then it's also important because people are calling this the first free and fair elections in Egypt's history since the time of the pharaohs. So this is the first time that people feel that their vote actually has a chance to matter. And so when they go to the polling stations, what they decide could um, end up, you know, that could be the new government. So uh, Nine months after Hosni Mubarak quit, Egypt is placed for protest. Are we looking at second revolution or not? Um, that's actually a question that I asked a lot of my um, interview subjects over the past week while I've been here, um, and I wanted to know: is this, you know, is this a new revolution? Is this part two? And what a lot of them told me is that no, the first revolution was unfinished; it was an incomplete revolution. Um, so this is just a, a completion or continuation of the revolution that we saw um, start in January. Um, and I don't think that a lot of the activists and revolutionaries that I've talked to, at least, I don't think they feel that the revolution will be complete until there's a civilian government in power, a civilian president, and the military is not in power. Can you describe a situation in Cairo's Tahrir Square these days, from the first day of elections? Um, well, for the, for, from the first day of elections, actually, um, it was a lot more quiet than it's been um, over the past week. Um, and actually, I'm working on a story today on just what have the elections done to Tahrir Square, have they taken the wind out of it? And some activists have told me no, you know, the, 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 the protest movement is still strong. But I went to Tahrir yesterday afternoon, I'm going again later today, and the numbers are nothing like we've seen in the past week. They're a lot smaller. Um, you see some people still camped out there, but just not as many people. And I think that the, the, the fact that there were successful elections, they were pretty peaceful, pretty, um, you know, no instances of violence or any major malfunctions. I think that may have done something to um, kind of balance out what the protesters have been demanding. Uh, okay. Uh, can you compare uh, this situation with the situation from the beginning of the year? Is there any similarities? or this is a completely different situation? Mm -hmm. um, do you mean with the protests? Yes, uh, protests from the January and February mm -hmm. in Egypt and these day protests. Right. Um, well, I um, in January and February, I was covering the protests from Doha. Um, so I wasn't actually in Egypt. This is the first time that I've been in Egypt um, for work um, since, since before the revolution. Um, but from the sense that I get it from the people that I talk to, they say that it, this feels very much like it did in January, especially during those days last week. Um, I want to say, you know, Sunday, Monday, the 19th, 20th um, of November, people said the numbers that they saw in Tahrir were just like the numbers that they saw in January, February. And there was a feeling that anything was possible and that, you know, the power was in the people's hands. Um, I think some of that has maybe subsided a little bit, like we said, with the elections, successful elections so far. Um, so some of that feeling may have gone away. But then again, you know, Friday's coming up. There could be another mass march. So we'll see what happens. Okay. Uh, you are using social media for reporting. Mm -hmm. uh, can you describe when your day at, at work and what equi equipment do you use? I suppose that you have some mobile device or something similar. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, well, I couldn't do my job without Twitter. Um, I know that's a huge plug for Twitter, but it's it's literally, uh, it's one of the first things that I check. Um, it's one of my tabs that are open in my computer window. You know, Twitter's one of the first because all the news is really right there. So I get an instant um, update on everything that's happening. Um, and then, of course, while I'm out in the field, I use my mobile phones. I have an iPhone. Um, I also am using right now a Samsung Galaxy. Um, that our new media team gave us to kind of practice and work, see if it worked out. Um, and I use my BlackBerry also. So 
those are great for, you know, tweeting on the go, for snapping pictures and uploading videos right away. Um, and, and then, of course, the, the flip cams and, and cameras also. But a lot of the times, phones can do it all in one. So um, those are some of the tools that I use. Uh, are you always on street or you uh, have some breaks or some particular time for reporting? Um, well, it, it's kind of a, it's up to me to kind of strike that balance. So a lot of the time I'll start my day, um, go out to Tahrir to see what's happening, tweet a few lines, um, call back to my, my news desk in Doha and tell them what the news is, what's happening. Um, and then go out and kind of find a story idea, figure, find someone to interview, come back to the room, um, do a little bit of, you know, writing up of the reporting that I did and then head back out. Okay. Uh, what do you think, uh, how much social media improved uh, Arab revolution and generally this situation now in Egypt? Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I know that people are reluctant to say that, you know, this revolution was sparked by Twitter and sparked by social media. And I think that, that that's a valid point, that no, it's sparked by the people and Twitter helped. But I, I think more and more what we're seeing is that um, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, these are all great tools to kind of get these people's message out, um, to spread a message that maybe wouldn't be spread otherwise for people um, outside of Egypt and outside of the, the Middle East. Um, so there is more of a reliance on it for journalists, especially because the people that you see tweeting are usually the people that are down there in the square when things are happening. So those become our reliable sources. Um, so I think more and more it's becoming a tool that, that's definitely necessary. Uh, what do you think uh, about some statements that uh, social media like Facebook, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube uh, influenced uh, on some political change in these countries, not only in Egypt? Mm -hmm. Do you agree or disagree with that statement? Um, well, I would have to have a, a specific example. I can't think of any offhand um, where actual tweeting or Facebook posting has changed, you know, policy. Um, but I do think that it helps mobilize people, and then it's the people that, in the end, change policy or can change policy. Um, so I think it's a mobilizing tool more so than it is a tool to actually get things done, you know. Uh, as we know, everyday citizens uh, now can use technology uh, that brings audio and video to social media. media. Uh, how citizen journalism is changing uh, journalism in general sense, and why do people contribute to social media? What do you think about that? Um, I think people contribute to social media because it's a great way to feel connected to people. Um, it's kind of amazing. You're talking, especially on Twitter or Facebook, you're talking to these people that you've maybe never met, you don't actually know, um, but you're sharing some kind of bond. Um, it's, it's funny that just yesterday I met um, two people that I follow on Twitter at a cafe in Egypt, and I'd never met them, and it was just was, it was so nice to finally put a face to a Twitter handle. Um, so I think that it, it just gives you the sense of connectedness. And that's why people use it. Um, and the first part of the question, I, I, I forgot. Can you repeat that again? Uh, about citizen journalism, how that changed journalism at all. And you already said, why do people contribute to the social media? Right. Well, citizen journalism, um, another story that I'm working on is actually, um, it's based on this new site, not so new, but it's called Bamboozer. And basically it allows people to take their, their mobile phone and just live stream events. And I think that that is just, it allows everyone basically to be a journalist, you know, a citizen journalist, because you see something happening, all you have to do is upload it and the world can see it happening at the same time you can. So I think citizen journalism has um, definitely impacted the field and I think it's helped, um, you know, real journalists do their jobs um, and get access to information they may not have been able to get before. Uh, do you make difference between a citizen journalist and a educated journalist? Or do you think they're the, on the same job? Um, I think that there should be a slight distinction because I think that if you, not so much educated journalists, but journalists who are maybe um, in the traditional fields, I think that they, there's a responsibility on them to make sure that everything that they're putting out is accurate, has been verified, um, has been double-checked before they tell the world, you know, their news. Whereas citizen journalism, um, there's lots of an emphasis on making sure that it's accurate. And so that's why it's up to the traditional journalists 
to double check whatever they're getting from citizens um, because it's helpful. But then there needs to be people need to know that there has been someone who went over this information and can verify its accuracy. Okay, that's all. Um, do you want something to add to say something that I didn't ask about social media or about your work? Um, no, I, I mean, I think you pretty much covered it all. I, I think that more and more journalism and, and, and social media are converging. Um, and I think not too long from now, we'll probably see a tool even better than Twitter that helps journalists and citizens do their job to tell the story. Um, so I think it's an exciting time to be in this field. Okay, thank you very much.